we take up leadership skills because they enable you to earn more money in Kenya. Think about it. Who earns more? The worker or the business owner? The farm worker or the farm manager? The clerk or the supervisor? The community member or the community leader? And you're going to see those who are in the leadership positions tend to earn more. And that's why we have to look at leadership skills. Leadership skills include the ability or strengths shown by people in management roles that aid in guarding and encouraging a group of people and their team towards achieving a common goal or a set of goals. So when you're a leader, it's not about you. It's your ability to get the other people to achieve a common goal or a set of goals. And so you require a couple of skills and some of these skills are like communication skills, you know, negotiation skills, conflict resolution skills, decision making skills, and quite a number of skills that we are going to discuss today. As a leader, a big skill that you require is relationship building. The general nature of leadership roles revolves around people. You will be dealing with people all the time. And you have been dealing with people, it's easier for you if you know how to build relationships. Because without understanding the people that you are guiding, leaders cannot be effective. You must understand the audience, your people that you're leading. The ability to forge bonds and establish communities is necessary for an effective leader. So you must have bonds. You must make people care for each other. Make people care for the cause. People understand each other. People deal with their differences and know how to work together as a team. That's a mark of a good leader. And a study conducted by one of the universities shows that employees tend to be happier in their workplace when they have a degree of non-work relationship with their superiors. And this is why in workplaces, we create a welfare when somebody is not feeling well, we take them flowers to the hospital or we go and see them. And it doesn't matter whether they're junior or the senior. This is why seniors, if you're a leader, remember their birthdays, remember their anniversaries. They feel more connected. Of course, we're looking at the relationships that are proper, the relationships that are right. The other skill you need in leadership is time management. Because you're not only managing your time, you're managing time for many others. And when you're in leadership, it gets very true that time is money. So time management involves planning and regulating how much to time to devote to different tasks. You're in the office and you're going to see a lot of people. How much time are you going to take to each with each person so that you're able to see them, listen to them, and not take too long? Leaders who manage time effectively may accomplish more in less time. And this allows you to actually take time to think about time so that you can have time for work, you can have time for yourself, time for family, time for your welfare, time for building yourself, time for exercise, all those things that you have to deal with. Because if you focus on only one side, then you're going to have a serious uh, challenge. If you're only focusing on work and not focusing on the family, not focusing on your faith or your physical health, that's going to be a challenge. So time management is very, very critical for leaders because you manage time. When you call out a meeting, how long is the meeting? How well do you come into the meeting? Do you keep people waiting and you tell them about traffic, which is totally not acceptable? The other quality or skill is reliability and trust. In fact, trust is the cornerstone of a successful organization. You must trust and believe in your other people's skills, integrity, and character. Because if you do that, people will be able to have a good relationship. Can people trust you with the information they gave you? Can the company trust you with the business secrets that you've been allowed to have? Can competitors trust you to share some information in the marketplace? So leadership develops through reliability. Are you reliable? And leaders must ensure that their words and deeds are consistent if they want to be trusted. If you said you're going to keep time, you keep time. You promise somebody their payment, you must make the payment. If those you lead cannot trust you to keep your word, they will lose faith in you very rapidly. Your word must be bankable. What you say you do, you do. What you say you don't do, you don't do. And as a leader, there's another skill that's very critical. Creativity. Yes, as a leader, you must be creative because a creative mindset is open, not closed, not rigid. You must produce ideas. You must produce solutions that are both significant and effective. Sometimes by encouraging a team of people to solve problems creatively, leaders provide the opportunity to develop goods and services that set them apart from their rivals. So you must be creative. You can't be rigid. You must be open. You must be free to new ideas. Creating a competitive advantage is what you're looking for. 
wherever you are, for whatever group you're leading. So creative leaders also foster an innovative culture by encouraging teams to showcase ingenuity as a unit. So we cannot always do things the way we've done it before. Innovation must be encouraged. New thinking must be encouraged. You know, people must be able to think outside the box. Don't punish people because they thought outside the box. Look at it from a different paradigm and that sets you aside as a leader. So creativity is another critical skill. As a leader, you have to be strategic. So strategic approach is a skill. You must be able to see the bigger picture and you must fit the path together. And effective leadership involves making well-considered, critically analyzed decisions to lead teams to success. So leaders who are successful will think before they act, or in other words, have a strategic plan before the action plan. So you have a strategic plan and you've looked at all the issues. The time it takes to devise a strategy depends on the problem or the decision that you have to make. And a good leader devotes the necessary time to strategic development. So you're not involved in always the dynamics and the mechanics of something. You must be able to start stand aside and look at the bigger picture. That's a skill that is critical. When you're looking at a leadership event from political levels or business levels, it is that strategic approach. And that is why as a leader, you have another skill that you need to have, self-awareness. And this involves understanding your own personality, understanding your behaviors, and understanding your motivations. And then you consider how those traits and qualities involve your leadership skills. And if you've got shortcomings, then you know how to address your shortcomings. If you have strengths, then you know how to use your strengths. You must have a self-reflection as a tool to help you in assessing your self-awareness. Because self-awareness and reflection can help you realize what you offer to your job as a leader and where you need improvement. And it is important to accept continuous improvement. The Japanese people tell us of Ikigai that we have to have continuous improvement all the time in our systems, but a lot of times in our minds. So self-awareness entails identifying where you excel and where you should grow. And when your leadership excels, your company productivity tends to follow. And if your productivity follows, you can be assured promotion comes up and that is how you earn more money in whatever you are doing. As you have seen, there are quite a lot of skills that we need. And I know now you are asking, who needs the leadership skill? And I think we have agreed, whether you are a student, a teacher, anyone in a role that involves influence of others and decision making can benefit from strong leadership skills. What makes a leader effective. Let's, let's take a moment or so to ask ourselves this question. While possessing leadership skills can be, make an effective leader, certain workplace skills or qualities also tend to, if, to affect effectiveness. So effective leaders are respectful, empathetic, patient, motivational, and willing to be held accountable. When you make your team feel respected, cared for, and motivated, you're more likely to be successful in leading your team. So it's not only about building leadership skills that can make you an effective leader, but you must also be able to look at the other qualities. Are you respectful? Are you empathetic? Are you patient with others? Are you motivational? And are you willing to be held accountable? When you do that, the people you're working with, whoever the team is, you feel respected, you feel cared for, and they'll be motivated. And you are likely to succeed because you're going to get results out of that. So how do you develop your leadership skills? To succeed as a leader, it is essential to commit to continued learning and plan personal growth and development. Becoming an effective leader involves gaining leadership skills and fine-tuning key workplace skills. You can accomplish these goals by receiving coaching or mentoring. Yeah, gaining experience has a part in it. Taking courses or even enrolling in leadership training programs. So if you're looking at coaching and mentoring, you work with leaders who can help you optimize your abilities and effectively manage your team. So leadership coaches and mentors, they act as supportive advisors who can help those being coached to become better in their workplace relationship and performance on the job. Mentorship is more of a collaborative relationship between a successful leader and a leader in training. You know, you become a mentor-mentee relationship. These are more personal and they can offer accountability because you can get the mentor to hold you accountable and help you as a mentee to get the beneficial connections 
So do you want to have a coach working for you or do you want to have a mentor? That's one way of building your skills. The other one is experience. Yeah, leadership experience can come in many forms. From playing on, you can be part of a sports team, you can be participating in a social group, you can be a volunteer. And in all these places, you can gain experience in leadership. So where there's a community thing at the Jumia, you offer to do something to take up a leadership position. While these experiences may not directly relate to your career, the skills you gain from here can become a lifetime skill and they will last for a lifetime. And the other way is obviously taking courses and training. And here you are looking at formal methods of gaining leadership skills. And this is a um, highly effective way of developing new abilities. You enhance the existing ones and you establish a foundation for a successful career in leadership. So think about training programs that you can take. And that's why we always tell people, you must go out of the way. You must make yourself better. And that's why my call to action this morning is when you get all these skills, they give you a chance to earn more. Now, where I come from, I want to invite you so that then you can improve your money management skills so that you can get more value from your earnings. So give yourself a chance for some financial literacy program, better your financial intelligence. And all you do, I think there are a few chances. If you send your name, you can text it, you can WhatsApp to 708 137. And somebody on the other side will answer you and guide you in the process. If you just want to run concepts on money management, yes, we have a fantastic book. It's called Wallet Words. I've authored that book and I'm happy that those who have read it have actually said it is a good aid. It's a good tool. You can get your copy and you can read it at your own pace. Just get in touch 0708 150 137.